that's the reason they beeped it. Right. My nan called them up and said, I don't want those jokes going on air. Hello, DJ, all round icon and humble human being, Jodie Harsh here. Welcome to Tea Time with Attitude Magazine, a weekly show where I spill the freshly brewed tea with the latest eliminated queen from season two of RuPaul's Drag Race UK. Today, I'm joined by a horror. That's so fab. Wait, what's happening? Horny hair for a horny bitch. I love that. We're gonna dive straight in. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little surprised to see you here today. So, how are you feeling about it all? I never even saw myself getting this far, so to even be here now, like, I'm honoured. Like, it feels like such an achievement, but it's obviously disappointing. Like, at that point up to then, I had the highest track record with, you know, wins never lip syncing and always been in the top or safe, so... I was surprised, but you know, yeah. I I always knew no matter what, if I was ever in the bottom against taste, it was game over. <laughs> and at the start of the episode, you were you were confident um, with your freshly won second repeat badge. Did you feel like you were like locked into the top four? I thought at that point it's between me and Bimini. You know, I was like, you know, the other girls have kind of you know, taste is you know lip syncing a lot. Ellie's not got any wins. Lawrence is really doing much since her previous track record so I was like you know I felt more settled um at this point you know I my guard was down I let myself be vulnerable to RuPaul yeah. I'd won a challenge you know I'd done everything that I felt really comfortable I feel like I'd done everything I needed to do what were you thinking when Ru said that it was going to be a comedy challenge I mean girl as soon as he <laughs> said that me and Tash just looked at each other and went not this <laughs> and then Ellie of course got to pick the running order for the stand-up show um, and put you first in the hope that you would bomb and she'd look good following you. Um, you weren't happy, nor was Lawrence for that matter as well. And you both called Shade. The reason me and Lawrence took it so personal was because until that point, me and Lawrence were Ellie's best friends. Like it's weird, you never see it on the show like how close me and Ellie are, but like even over a lockdown, Ellie was FaceTiming me every day. So that's why in that moment when she kind of was like setting me up to go home, I was like, why are you doing this? Like you, you wanted me and you in the finale together. Yeah. So that's why you know I was I was I was like you know I can accept being first. But it was when she then turned around to me and went, "Well, I put you first so that I can go after you because I know you're going to make me look a lot better." And I was like, "That is just rude as fuck." If you were in Ellie's shoes, what running order would you have uh, done? For me, I would have done it. You know, like Lauren said, a shit sandwich at a pub. <laughs> We had the conversation prior to Ellie's running order. You know, Ellie, Lauren said, I want to go first. Bimini said, I want to go last. I said, yeah. I'll go I'll go third. Ellie said, she'll go second. Tay said, she'll go fourth. It was set solid. Then yeah. when she turned around and went, so Hori, you're going to go first. I was like, yeah. okay. Even though they've just offered to take that position for all of us, you're going to do that to me because you want me to go home. Cool, great, let's go. How much um, pressure did you feel when you were on stage doing a comedy challenge? Like, was it? Like a tough I mean, crowd. It you was, had Dawn French in the crowd. Ah! I know. It was, it was, you know, I barely even performed. So even to be there, like doing a stand up set for eight minutes straight, because that's how long we had to do it for. Um, I was sat there and obviously there was no crowd. It was just the last of the four of them. And I remember I walked out, I did the whole set. Yeah. And then no one was laughing. I'm thinking, what the hell is going on? And then they went, then when I finished it, they went, oh, horror, your mic wasn't on, you need to do the whole thing again. Oh. So I had to go back and do it all again. So then I was, that's when I started stuttering and stumbling. <laughs> did your, did your nan give, give your set the seal of approval after the episode last night? That's the reason they beeped it. Right. My nan called them up and said, I don't want those jokes going on air. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. Hi, is that RuPaul? <laughs> it's a horror scam. So, yeah, she caught it. She got to, obviously production have to like authorize things with people, yeah. just yeah. mentioning the names and stuff. So she just said, Look, I, you know, I don't, <laughs> these things didn't happen, so I, I don't want them. That. <laughs> you what? You were censored on Drag Race by your nan. I know. <laughs> she was like, I will sue. <laughs> Oh, the emotions ran high when you and the Queens returned to the workroom after the runway. And you told Ellie that you were angry and disappointed to even, you couldn't even look at her. What they didn't air was prior to that, they asked us a question who should go home tonight and why. Mm. So that is why we were all like, 
so heated because we'd all have this horrible que like question asked of us and everyone dreads that you know ellie diamond said my name um so that's why i was like you know you've already you tried to fuck me over once with the running order now you're trying to stand in front of the judges and give them reasons as to why i shouldn't be here yeah. after you've been my best friend throughout all of lockdown and you've, you've stood by me and like We've talked it out, obviously, since then. And in, in Untalked, you know, she got upset. I was holding around. We talked it out and had a moment. And it was all fine. And that's why, you know, she was crying when I left. Because we, we are best friends. We all are best friends. Yeah. That top five was is our little girl group anyway. So yeah. we were. it was always us and the other half of the cast. Like, it's kind of two separate entities for a while. So, yeah. Um, yeah. it was hard. And then the stage was set for this, like, really emotional lip sync between Taste and Yourself to one of my favourite songs ever. And, like, even my... I, I was, like, tearing up watching it last night. So, what was going through your head? Adding up the odds, I have more wins. I have a better track record. I've not lip synced before. I was like, if mm. I can just do an okay job here, you know, I could scoop by i was like the worst that's probably going to happen is it's a double save you know yeah um wow. so when they called it obviously taste that i was like okay well they're going to call me any second now so i'll just wait and then they didn't and i was like oh i'm actually going home okay i came off stage i cried but at the same time i can't be upset and i can't be bitter because it's my best friend is the person i probably love the most in the competition and you know, to be in a competition against her and lifting against her and be sent home by her, I'm, I'm, I'm not pressed. Yeah, yeah. No. And then you may have had one of the biggest turnarounds in terms of public love of maybe mm -hmm. any queen that I can remember from Drag Race. So what do you think was like the, the, the sort of turning point for you? I don't really get to go out and socialise a lot. So um, people tend to make a perception of me prior to even meeting me and have this idea of me just from looking at my Instagram, which is, you know, drag fashiony bitch and that's how it is i kind of went into it living up to this ideal of what people wanted me to be you know everyone wanted me to be this villain and i felt like i wanted to be the villain because that's i felt like i was going to let people down if i wasn't it and i think the more that i was in the competition i was comfortable i was forgetting that that i was yeah. you know i needed to be this villain 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 and yeah. then you know it was the moment where we were every time before we go out on stage we have this mirror and you you know, you check yourself, then you walk out, you do your runway. And the girls always would like say to me like, oh, oh you look sensational, like, you look amazing, like, this is iconic, blah, blah. And I'd always just go, oh, thank you. And that was it. And yeah. then uh, they called me out for it. One day I think it was Ellie Diamond, she was like, you never give us a compliment back, you know, to me or Lawrence, when we, give, we say to you how gorgeous you are. Yeah. And I sat there and I thought, oh my God, this is because I'm just so in my head. Yeah. I'm oblivious to what's going on. I'm so blinded that I'm not able to actually acknowledge what's going on around me or anyone else. And I was I like, to, to, I was like, this is what I'm doing to Tia. Yeah. I was like, I'm doing this to Tia. Like I'm I'm so insecure in my head that I'm punishing other people and not giving them the benefit of doubt around me. And then that's why I had that moment with Tia in the mirror and I said, look, I'm sorry, I'm a horrible person. Yeah. I think that happens a lot in Drag Race as well. You really, because it's such a sort of a pressure cooker, you really learn about yourself and you see your flaws. Like you're saying now, you're like, mm. I don't give the comments back. So when you're when you're filming the TV show, how aware do you think the queens are of like how they're going to be coming across on TV? That's the hardest part of the whole process, I think, having to see yourself, you know, go through emotions and and, and relive it. Yeah. Um, when you're when obviously that was some of these moments when the first episodes came out were me a year ago, and I'm a yeah. totally different person to that now. You learn from the girls around you by living with drag queens in that environment. Yeah. You know, there's many times I said to Lawrence, I was like, Lawrence, you have such an infectious personality that when you're not okay or you feel like you've bombed, you bring the whole room down. And I think you need to be more self-aware and understand that when you're good, we're good because you have that, this is your power. You know, you can walk onto a stage and everyone be amazed by you because you feel great. But if yeah. you feel bad, you could make the whole crowd have a shit night. Yeah, and that, yeah. that's the thing. I think we all learn from each other and that's the power, I think, of having a drag community. Um, Fans noticed that your blue face makeup last week and the red lip um, looked a little like Sister Sisters. Was there an element? Ele oh. <laughs> I call shade. I was going to say, was there an element of you getting your own back there? But I think we've probably just cleared that up. <laughs> no, I mean, um, 
I adore the girl. Like, I absolutely yeah. adore sister, sister. But um, in that moment, I was doing it, and I was like, well, obviously, I'm going to paint a blue, I'm gonna paint a blue mask on. I first did it, like, here, and I was like, it's like a beard, so it got a bit more higher. And, and then I was like, oh, God, this is blue. And then, then I was like, okay, I need to change it off. And I was like, I don't want it to be, this looks a bit flat. I was like, I'm going to add glitter. So I added glitter. Then I was like, this nude lip looks weird with it. I'm going to add a red lip. And then I looked at myself in the mirror and I went, fuck, I'm sister, sister. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. It was great. I well, oh, well, oh well, here we go. Oh, well. And I just <laughs> went higher. <laughs> and then was she like, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> well, we had the whole thing on touch, and she was like, "Well, this makeup looks looks familiar." And I went, "Well, yeah. just like the fish and chips, I yeah. won, bitch." <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk because you live with taste, don't you? Yeah, she's downstairs in bed. Oh, um, what's going on? Are you in a relationship? Can I be a bit tabloid journalist there and say you in a relationship or is that pushing too far? We played off to it for the show, you know, we gave yeah. we gave the people what they wanted. Yeah. Uh, we wanted the OK magazine spread, they never contacted us, sadly. Oh, it's but... not like buy a hat for the wedding, just yet. No, I know. <laughs> a little one balance race. on the side. I'll drag race a wedding post lockdown. <laughs> I know, I mean, um, we used, we had our thing back in the day, like, I think right before casting, uh, me and Taste was, you know, a little, little something. But, um, you know, when as soon as we got casted, it was kind of like, we walked into the show, it was like, oh, hiya. Yeah. And then we kind of just, after that, stopped it, and then we moved in with each other, and we just become like, we're kind of like Kate Moss and Naomi Campbell. That's how we see ourselves, you know? Totally, totally. Finally, I want to ask you, have Vogue approached you yet? Maybe the email got lost. I don't know. <laughs> Check your spam folder, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think I just need to just know. Maybe maybe, maybe something just got lost somewhere. Totally, totally. Me and you need to go and sit front row at a fashion show when Fashion Week comes back. Oh, defo. I mean, yeah, that's, we'll that was one of the biggest things I had. I got signed with Elite Models during the show. So, girl, we will be there. Milan, New York, yeah. Paris. We're doing the whole thing. 100%. All right, honey, thanks for coming on and talking to us. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the club, bitch. Absolutely. See you later. Yes, Bye. 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 Thanks for watching Tea Time, served to you by Attitude Magazine. Subscribe to Attitude's YouTube so you never miss an episode of scalding hot content with the next queen to get the chop. See you next week. Like, comment, and share the video with your best squirrel friends.